What would you do if you could tell the future? Did you know that it was 30 years ago that two authors predicted the current crisis we're in? Everything from the coronavirus crisis through to the American riots. And in fact, we are only in the first of five stages of this crisis. Hi, it's Roger Hamilton here again with another episode of Entrepreneur TV. And on this episode, I'm gonna go through exactly who predicted this, what these five stages are, and how you can go about preparing for the future to ensure that you're ready for what's about to come. So it was actually in the turn of the 1990s that two authors, William Strauss and Neil Howe, came up with a book which was called Generations. And after that book, Generations, they came up with this book, which is called The Fourth Turning. The Fourth Turning, an American prophecy, what the cycles of history tell us about America's next rendezvous with destiny. So what Strauss and Howe basically figured out from their book Generations is that we all go through these big cycles of time. In fact, all of humanity goes through these 18, 90 year cycles, which are divided into four lifetimes. And in those four lifetimes, we effectively go through the same seasons of spring uh, leading to summer, leading to autumn, leading to winter. And when they wrote the book in the 1990s, we were in what they called the unraveling, which is the autumn season. And they saw, hey, there's a crisis coming, which is the winter season. And it was about time they warned the American public. Now, in the 1990s, when they actually wrote this book, not a lot of people were listening because it was the dot-com boom. Everyone was doing great. And so as a result, it was only a small group of people that actually started taking this seriously. And even for them, this was too far in the future because they were saying that the entire crisis would happen from 2005 to 2025. It was too far in the future for people to even worry too much about this. But now we're in the crisis. And so now it's time to worry. So what can we learn from the book and what can we learn about the next steps we should take? Strauss and Howe looked at the fourth turning as the end of an entire cycle where everything changed. And so the last three turnings we had, well, 300 years ago, it was the American Revolution. The American Revolution was from around 1760s to 1790s. And then 100 years later, it was the American Civil War from about the 1814s to 1850s. And then just 100 years ago, we then had the Spanish flu, the Great Depression, and then from the Great Depression, World War II. Now, if you're thinking these are just authors that just came up with some crazy theory, in fact, they're the same authors that came up with the concept of millennials. In fact, in their book, Millennials Rising, this became a Bible for the marketers of today, where they were showing how every generation has also got an archetype and every archetype has got a different role at every point in the turning. In their book, The Fourth Turning, this is exactly what they say about each of the five different stages, starting with stage one, the spark. A spark will ignite a new mood. The CDC announces the spread of a new communicable virus. Congress enacts mandatory quarantine measures. Mayors resist. Urban gangs battle suburban militias. Cause mount for the president to declare martial law. So this is actually from the book where they're going through the different scenarios of what's likely to happen, which actually triggers the crisis, which means what you've seen so far is just the beginning. It's not the crisis itself. After the first phase, which is what we're in right now, comes the second stage, which is disruption. This is what they say about what's about to come. The new mood and its jarring new problems will provide a natural endpoint for the unraveling era decline in civic confidence. As a crisis catalyzes, these fears will rush to the surface, jagged and exposed. Distrustful of some things, the individuals will feel that their survival requires them to distrust more things. This behavior could cascade into a sudden downward spiral and implosion of societal trust. So everything we're going through right now is not about coronavirus. Everything we're going through right now is not about the riots in the streets. Everything we're going through is about a breakdown of the trust of the old system in order for a new system to be created, which has happened every single time that there's been a fourth turning. So what about the third stage, which we can expect to see maybe six months or even 12 months away from now? The third stage is collapse. At some point, America's short-term crisis psychology will catch up with the long-term post-unraveling fundamentals. This might result in a great devaluation, a severe drop in the market price of most financial and real assets. As assets devalue, trust will further disintegrate, which will cause assets to devalue further and so on. Many Americans won't know where their savings are, who their employer is, what their pension is, or how their government works. Before long, America's old civic order will seem ruined beyond repair. People will feel like a magnet has passed over society's disk drive, blanking out the social contract, wiping out old deals, clearing the books of vast unpayable promises to which people have once felt entitled. Now, for those of you who've been following along on my channel, you know that I've already been posting some economic crisis videos about what's to come, given that we're just stepping into this right now. This was predicted 30 years ago by the two of them in the book. And more importantly, what's key is what you do now to prepare, because while a lot of people will be losing their wealth, there'll be others that'll be gaining brand new systems, structures, and even businesses 
of this crisis as well. And by the way, if you have not been following my videos, do subscribe now because we are going to be giving updates all the way through uh, this crisis, which as you've heard, could be going for the next five years. And so what about stage four? Stage four is the climax. It's the peak of the whole thing, just like when you have a wave, it rises, 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 and then it crashes. From this trough and from these dangers, the makings of a new social contract and new civic order will arise. This battle could be peaceful or violent, involving public and private militias. Decisive events will occur, events so vast, powerful, and unique that they lie beyond today's wildest hypotheses. Armed confrontation usually occurs around the climax of the crisis. If there is confrontation, it's likely to lead to war. This could be any kind of war, class war, war against terrorists, or superpower war. And by the way, before I get to the stage five, I do want to make a point about all of the different things that are in those books and what I really resonate with as well. My whole life has been about following patterns and looking at time and how time moves. So the wealth dynamic system that we created was all about the cycles of time within a business, for example, or within an industry. The cycles that we use within the Chinese energies also goes through these four seasons. So the more that you see that in every one of these different steps that we're going through, there is an energy in a cycle, which you can then tune into as well. Just like a surfer on a wave, then the sooner that you can be prepared for the next step and take the actions before we get there. How can we make sense of these different generations and different cycles? Strauss and Howe looked at each of the four different seasons and gave them a name. The very first one, which was the spring they called the high. And the high was the time when a brand new beginning happened. In fact, after 2025, we're going to see a new high. We just got to get through the pain and the challenges that we have now to be able to get to that high because there's enough that has to be broken down from the old before we can start the new. The second of the seasons, which is the summer, is the awakening. This is where everything then starts to take form and a new structure is then born. A new world order is created. And then from that second one, you then get to the unraveling where things already start to go south. And then finally you get to the next crisis a hundred years from now. At every one of these different stages, you also have got an entire generation that gets born. So at the very beginning of the high after the Great Depression and World War II, we had the baby boomers. The baby boomers were the ones known as the prophets, the ones that were able to be visionary and see the future. After the baby boomers came Generation X. That's my generation. These are the nomads, the ones that actually then traveled out and spread the new system or the new world order around the world. And then during the unraveling, you then have the heroes, the ones who actually start poking holes in this whole new world order. Uh, these are the millennials of the last 20 years. And then finally, you have a crisis. Since 2005, you then have this whole new group that's actually been born, which has, doesn't even have a name yet. And these are the artists. This is where a new renaissance gets born and where self-expression and creativity becomes the main driver of all the things we're going to be seeing around the world in the coming years. In coming months, I'm going to go through more detail on exactly what each of these different archetypes are meant to do or how we are meant to protect ourselves and lead ourselves to an entirely new beginning. And this is all coming not just from the work of Strauss and Howe, but from all the work of those who are looking at the future and the new future which is coming our way. And that takes us to stage five, because stage five is new beginnings. And this is what we can be expecting in the coming years as this crisis plays out. The economy will in time recover. Compared to today, it will be less globally dependent with smaller cross-border trade and capital flows. And emerging in this crisis climax will be a great entropy reversal, that miracle of human history in which trust is reborn. In a moment of maximum danger, that seed will implant and a new social contract will take root. For a brief time, this American feminine will be malleable in ways that would stagger today's unraveling era mindset. The crisis climax will recede into the public memory, a heart-pounding memory to all who will recall it personally, a pivot point for those born in this aftermath, the stuff of myth and legend for later generations. What are three things you can do with all this information? Number one, don't get caught up in the history of the media. The more you have a sense of what's coming, the less you're gonna be surprised or shocked when it actually happens. Number two, expect things to get worse before they get better. So now is not the time to go like crazy, like celebrating about the fact that we suddenly have an end to the lockdown. This is a time to be cautious and to be ready for battening down the hatches for the winter that's coming. And the third thing is get ready for a new beginning. While it's not gonna happen overnight, it is gonna come in the next couple of years. And this is a moment in time which only happens once in a lifetime. As Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. The more in tune you are with the whole seasons of not just nature, but humanity itself, the more we actually can go out there and shape that humanity. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click the like button, do subscribe so that we can keep in touch and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the coming videos when we actually start sharing more of the detail of exactly what the next steps are we should all be taking. I'll leave a link below to the book if you want to go get it on Amazon. I recommend it as a read if you're interested in more. And until the next video, stay safe and look forward to seeing you soon.